Okay, y'all, welcome back here. A little Skunk Works action going on here. What we're going to do right now is we're going to do some adjustments to this sloppy tailwheel. As you can probably figure out, that that would shimmy pretty good. It's a lot of slop in it. So this thing's come in for its annual, but it's a recently purchased airplane, and you can see we're doing a lot of upgrades to it as well. So and actually, I was pretty impressed that the, uh, the spring action's pretty tight on it right now. That's not bad. It's a little loose but it's really not bad. So what we're gonna do though, is see if it's letting it reverse. That's not a good thing. So it's letting it come too far before it's locking. So we're gonna work on that a little bit and uh, get it uh, get it nice. But in the meantime, I'm gonna check the bearings, or the bushings and all that stuff. So brand new tail wheel otherwise, um, but just sloppy. And then we're gonna take one link up here because I do like these a little bit tighter with the Husky here. Um, I've tried loose, I've tried tight, but I like this a lot better. Now his clutch has a little bit of play in it, but not too much. So what we're going to do is we'll pull this off, check all the bushings, and then we're going to pull the cotter pin out down here, tighten it up. And I'm going to re-grease it. We'll do a little test on it. Okay, I see also this is the locking nut or the locking plate that goes on the back and it goes in to the fork. There's a little slot in the fork when it goes in. So it has to be put in correctly. And then what that does is that keeps the axle from actually rotating. See the axle can't rotate at all. And that keeps the axle from free floating in the uh, deal. And I see a lot of guys smash those or don't put them in correctly. That's pretty critical because it'll cause premature wear on the bushings themselves. You can see inside the uh, wheel here, there's a bushing right here. That's the bushing itself. So we pop that out, we look at the bearings in there. They've got plenty of grease in them, and the bushing looks pretty good. It doesn't look worn. The face of it doesn't look boogered up or anything like that, so it's pretty good. I like that. We'll turn it around, look at it on the other side. Little grass there. That's red grease. Bushing looks pretty good. No wear. Look inside here, there's no wear. So that looks good. So we can just take that and, it, and we'll add grease to it later, but we can take that and we can set all this aside. So we'll set all this aside like this. So here's where we are. Don't pay attention to the springs, but we're looking at the breakaway. That's pretty good. It's a little loose. So what we're going to do is we're going to tighten it up until it bottoms out and we're going to count and see where we are. There's half. Okay, so it's a half turn before it bottoms out. Not bad. So as you can see, if it's fully tightened, it doesn't move at all, right? So actually that's where I normally start is a half turn on these. So we're not too far from where we exactly want to be. Pretty happy. So we're going to go one half of a turn which is right there. We're going to test that. See it breaks away a little, a little bit more, but that's a little loose still. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to add like an eighth of a turn to it like that. I always like to put new cotter pins in. And I noticed that uh, they did put this in correctly, so now we got to look and see if we can find the hole. And it's right in between. So I'm just going to have to work on that until I hit it just to the next one. Because you don't want it too tight. It's better that it's a slight amount loose than too tight. And that looks like that lines up pretty good with the hole right there. So once I get the cotter pin in, then we'll, we'll uh, find out. That's going to be okay. It's just a little bit tighter than, and it kind of lets loose a little bit on one side, but that's okay. As while everything's apart and I can make final adjustments yet, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and address the spring plates now. Uh, I mean, sorry, the spring uh, cables. And then I'm going to put the wheel in. I'm going to test it all to get it the way I want it. And then I'll finally, I'll bend the cotter pins when we're done. See where I've got my head against them. And I have to kind of pull against the springs. Just like that. Now we got it off. Now the fun part begins. So you got to get this down through here. 
it's no easy way to do it because what happens okay this pulls out like that see no problem there so we'll take that off and then you pull that through there like that and that takes there and then you hook it through the next one which is right here and it pulls through and then we have to get rid of that link don't we guess what it just pries open don't need to cut it off piece of cake slide it back up this is not hard y'all I've seen people cut them and play with them and all kinds of crazy things and it just ain't that hard put your head against it put some slack in it put that back on there Bang, boom, done. Get that back in there. One down, one to go. Piece of cake. What I like to get is where the, the hole right here is in the, where you can see it, like that. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure we bend, go forward and bend it around the back so it doesn't catch on every piece of grass that it goes by. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on, like that. And then there's a little trick here too that you do. You take your socket wrench and you tighten it enough that the wheel doesn't turn. What that does is that compresses the bushings into place, makes sure that the bearings are pressed into place. You do that, now you back it off. Usually start about a half a turn from there and it rolls nice and smooth. We could actually come just a little bit more. And it just rolls nice and smooth. And there's just ever so slightly a little bit of play in it. And that keeps the bushings from getting compressed and worn out. But that's the trick to the tail wheel. Now we start looking to see where it lines up. Like that. Good, good as new. And we didn't hurt anything, tear up anything, and we have extra chain links if we need them someday. And that is a really nice looking tail wheel now. It's nice and tight. It breaks where it's supposed to. It lasts a long time. Makes the owner very happy.